Jesse here. This is another week of Kidopolis virtually uh, through the airwaves. I don't know, something like that. But we're doing Kidopolis from my kitchen table, again, dining room table technically. Um, and this month, the theme is off stage, drop the act. Um, we're talking about honesty and particularly this week, integrity, which is choosing to be truthful in whatever you do. So I built this Jenga tower here to represent your integrity, okay? My integrity, just somebody's integrity. It can be a fictional person's integrity. And let's say that each time, right now, it's pretty solid, right? Let's say that their integrity is pretty solid, but then for whatever reason, they decide to tell a lie, okay? And each time they tell a lie, let's say a block gets taken away. Hopefully this doesn't go too soon, but um, each time they tell a lie, we have to move the blocks up. And we're kind of starting to mess with the integrity of the structure. But also, this is a really good representation of like your own personal integrity. And if you tell lies, or if you're not truthful with who you are and like what you do, if you're not living, oh, so that wasn't good integrity for me because I started to move that block and then I decided to move this one. But if you're not truthful to who you're supposed to be for God, that's a problem too. That compromises integrity. That makes it less than sturdy. Okay, let's go ahead and move this one. Let me be integritous. That's not a word. I don't think. Uh-oh, look at everything slipping. Let's see if we can make it. Woo! I made it, okay? But look, it's getting pretty shaky. And not only is this kind of representative of what your heart's going to look like and like how you're feeling about yourself, but this might be how people view you. Instead of sturdy and strong and somebody to be relied on, they might see you as a wobbly tower and somebody that they don't want to put any trust into. So just think about that when um, you talk to people and how you choose to represent yourself. Okay, because God, think about God, he lives with a lot of integrity. Jesus was a very integritous person. I'm sure there's a word that I just can't remember that, that integritous means. That actually means what I'm trying to say, but it's fine. Okay? So just think about that because you do not want to be a wobbly tower. You want to be a nice, strong, basically like a brick house. No, it's like, it can just be a really big mess. So think about your integrity. Think about the person that you're showing other people who you are and think about how solid your heart is. Because you know what? Other people, maybe if I, for example, chose blocks from this side, maybe you wouldn't see all of the holes and all the missing pieces that were actually compromising the integrity here. Maybe other people won't see it, but you would know in your heart, right? Okay. So think about that. I'm going to get one little other activity set up to demonstrate this just because it's fun to play with toys, right? And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, I have a really good opportunity to be integritous with you, which, by the way, um, when I'm done, I'm going to email the dictionary company and let them know that I'm making it a word. Um, because right after we were done with the Jenga blocks and Jacob Pitt stopped recording, he let me know that um, integrity is not our weekly bottom line. It's our monthly bottom line. Our weekly bottom line, I mean, it all goes together, right? So don't worry, we didn't get too off track, is when you're not truthful, you lose trust. So started setting up these dominoes and we're not going to play dominoes like the actual way with the rules and everything. We're just going to, this is the way we, you play it, right? Okay. So <clears throat> each of these dominoes represents an interaction with somebody. Okay. Let's say it's an interaction with interactions with um, your parents. They say, um, oh, can you clear your table or clear your plate? And you say, sure. Maybe this stuff is about your schoolwork. Maybe this stuff is, did you, um, did you brush your teeth? Is your room clean? Um, were you nice to your sister today? And when you're honest, you're being upright and honest, right? But let's say they say something like, um, hey, did you remember to give your teacher that note or something? Okay, whatever it is. I'm sure we've all been dishonest before. It's not okay but it's understandable, right? So let's say that there is a time, we're just using the example of the teacher's note that you were not honest. And when you're not honest, and you're not upright, you let's just say you fall, that falls down, right? But then they all fall down. All of those times that you weren't honest with your parents, 
those all fell down from one little lie. And that doesn't really seem fair, but if you think about it, one little moment of dishonesty can ruin a lot of trust. And then it can take a while to build that back up, right? Because, you know, when you tell the truth one time after telling these lies, you still kind of have all this to build back up. So you have to, once the truth comes out, keep being truthful and be patient because it might take a while. These might be heavier than they started on if we're pretending that these are real lies. They might be a little bit harder to pick back up and put into place. So you have to be patient. But better yet, just show some integrity. Be honest. And remember, if it's if it's really hard for you to be integritous, I really can't wait to find out what the actual word I'm trying to say is. Um, if, if it's really hard for you to do that naturally, think about the things that you might lose, which might be trust. Okay, so... John and Brandon and Kellen, I think, I have to double check who's on the so-and-so show this week. They're going to bring you a lesson, and we're going to come right back here. Probably no more games, but we're going to do Memory Verse, which is kind of like our running Kidopolis game, right? You get a treat, and then we're going to do prayers. See you soon. Would you like to go to the movies later? Would I? Would I? Yes, yes, yes. Do you want to go to the movies later or not? Huh? <laughs> hey. Who's this? Oh, oh, what does it look like? It's Pinocchio. Uh, hey, I'm trying to change my image, remember? Call me Jerry. Oh, sorry, I forgot. So, 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 Jerry, what's it like being a real boy? I'm still a puppet. That cricket didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> Did you try wishing upon a star? Yeah, and I ended up with you. whoop a dee doo whoop a dee doo woo no! <laughs> well, what do you think? I think uh, I think it's it's it's, uh, it's great. It's really great. <laughs> Thanks. I've been working with them for months. C could you see my mouth moving? Your mouth? Yeah. No, I, I mean I had, had no idea that was you making the voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we make a pretty good team, don't we? Ah, <laughs> uh huh. Well, we've been thinking about going out on tour together. Now, be honest with me. Do you think uh, you think audiences would like us? A tour? Mm -hmm. A comedy tour? Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, I, ah, uh, you know, I think that would be a, a super idea. I think it would be a big hit. This may be the best idea you've ever had. Uh, Brandon, is, is your nose growing? Absolutely not. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and we are so glad you decided to join us today. And I am doubly glad. Oh, yeah? And why are you so glad, glad? Because of today's guest. Oh, that's right. That should be a lot of fun. It should be doubly fun. Please welcome all the way from Hollywood someone who knows stuff. Oh, John. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Hey! Hey! How's it going? So good. Tell us who you are and what you know. I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse Brandon. He's really excited that you're on the show today. Doubly excited. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. My name is Oakley, and I'm a special effects makeup artist for the movies! Yes, yes, yes! Okay, special effects makeups. Now, that's someone who does more than just covering up some pimples and bad skin and stuff, right? Right, right. They've got other makeup artists to do that. But if you want someone to make you look older or to give you like a nasty cut or a bruise or something, call me. Yeah, but your specialty is... Oh, my specialty is making people into monsters! monsters! Oh, so you make what? Monster masks? <sighs> I mean, sometimes. Mm. Uh, more often, though, it's makeup and latex and glue. It's important not to cover the actor's face entirely 
because you have to see their mouth move and their facial expressions. Oh, so that because that way uh, you want their performance to shine through the makeup, right? Exactly. I want to be a monster. I think uh, Brandon would like you to make him up today. I do, I do, I do, I do. Well, I can't do it myself, of course, because I'm on set. But did you get the package I sent? Yeah. Got it. You are going to turn yourself into one of the scariest, the smartest, most deadly creatures ever. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm going to talk you through it. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right, let's get started with the black eyeliner pencil. Uh, okay. All right, yeah, got it. Makeup time lapse! Wow. Brandon, great effort. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, oh yeah. There <sighs> you go. <sighs> <gasps> you look amazing. I look like an owl. An owl's not a monster. Okay, but owls are smart. They can be scary and deadly too. Just ask mice and bunny rabbits. I look like an owl. Well, thanks, Oakley, for showing us what you do. It really is. Incredible. You bet. Thanks for having me. Are you going to be all right? <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, I. Whoo! <laughs> I mean, what's going on? I'm an owl. Yeah, you are. And you look great. And I'd trust you. And I would come to you for advice. And you know it. Move on. Will do. How about a story from the book of 2 Kings starring the one and only so-and-so show players? Perfect. Perfect. This story is about a man named Gehazi who was a servant to Elisha, a prophet of God. Gehazi did something that wasn't very honest. Who? Me? <laughs> but we'll get to that in a minute. Oh. First, let's talk about Naaman. Naaman was an army commander. That's right. I'm Naaman. I'm the man in charge. When I say jump, people say how high. Who are? He was a brave soldier who won many battles, but he had a skin disease. Ah, go away, spots. Go away. Ah, you're still there. Ah. A servant in Naaman's house spoke of a prophet in Samaria who could heal Naaman's disease. So after getting permission from his king, Naaman went to see Elisha. Whoa! Ho, 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 off screen caravan of horses and chariots. Ho! Oh! oh, wow, wow. Elisha? Oh, me? No. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, he is inside, but he has sent me out here to give you a message. He says to go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River, and then your skin will be healed. Seriously? Uh, Yes, yes, he says to go and wash yourself seven times. Yeah. Got it, I got it, I got it, seven times, right. yeah. Mm. Well. Unbelievable. <laughs> Giddy up, man. <laughs> mm. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself in the water seven times. And when he came out, his skin was clean. So he returned to Elisha. Whoa! <laughs> Elisha? 
Now I know your God is the one true God. <laughs> Please accept a gift from me. I have 750 pounds of silver. I have 150 pounds of gold. And I have 10 sets of fine clothing all upon my chariot that I would love to have someone come and deliver to you as, as I, as I. I serve the Lord. As sure as he is alive, I will not accept a gift. Uh, um, well, please, <laughs> you, you must accept a gift. I will not. Please? No. Oh. <gasps> Pretty please. Nope. But no matter how much Naaman begged, Elijah refused to take a gift. So Naaman started on his way. Gehazi wasn't too happy about the whole thing. My master has been a little too easy on Naaman. He should have at least accepted a gift. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go after Naaman and ask him to give me a gift or something as sure as the Lord is alive. <laughs> so Gehazi ran and caught up with Naaman. Wait up! Whoa! Wait up. <laughs> huh? Is everything all right? Oh, it's... <sighs> oh. Uh, totally. Yes. Uh, now, if do, do do you do you remember how my master said that he he didn't need any kind of gifts or, or anything? I do. Oh, excellent. Well, uh, turns out he's changed his mind. Yes, yes. We've had a, a visitor drop by who is a little short on gold and silver and stuff. Oh, of course. So, yeah. How much do you want? How much? How much? <laughs> I didn't even think about how about 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothing? Well, I insist you take twice as much silver. <laughs> you do know best, yes. <laughs> oh dear, wow. Excellent. Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Yes, well, that's quite a lot. Thank you mm. very much for your kindness. Uh, mm. Yes. Be on your way. Oh, yes, I will be on my way. When Gehazi got back to Elisha's house, he put the gifts away, someplace safe. But before he could truly celebrate what he'd done, he ran into Elisha. <laughs> Silver is so heavy. <laughs> oh, look at it all. It's, oh, <clears throat> Elijah? Where have you been? Me? Little old moi. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> Gehazi, I know you went back to Naaman. My spirit was with you the whole time. Why couldn't you just be honest? Oh, I have always been honest. Now... You're going to have the same skin disease as Naaman. No. No. No, no. No, 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 no. No! The end. Well, let's hear it for the so-and-so show players. What'd you think, fellas? Cool story, right? I mean, absolutely. Very funny. I, you know, it's hard to trust people once they've told a lie like that. I know I'd have a hard time trusting Kazi. Yeah, he was just foul. All right, all right. See you next time, Kellen. I guess all good things have to come to an end. Bye. Owl good things. No more owl jokes, okay? I'll try. Hmm. I can't even think of what comes next in the show. Oh, well, I guess we'll just have to wing it. <laughs> okay, now I'll try. I'll try. Reveal I'll try. the question. Why is it important for people to trust you? 
That's a good question. What do you think, John? Well, because no one likes to hang out with people who don't tell the truth. Stop it. <laughs> I said who? All right. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Oh, boy. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> hey, Brandon. How many licks does it take to get to the center of this lollipop? <laughs> oh, let me see. One. Two. Two. Is it good? It is memory verse time and our memory verse this week, this month, I'm sorry, apparently I'm getting my weeks and my months confused, is from the book of Proverbs. And I told you, I think two weeks ago, that one thing that you can do with the book of Proverbs, um, if you're ever trying to find a verse in it, if you don't want to flip all the way to the beginning and look up the page number, um, just remember that the book of Proverbs is roughly in the middle of your Bible. So... Ugh, my bobby pin. I'm going to take this out. I used to use this as a bookmark a long time ago. And the funny thing is, I don't even remember what I was marking. So, anyways. My halfway point is right around Proverbs uh, chapter 20, verse 3. But we are in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. So I have to go back just a couple pages. So, we find our big number 10. Do you have your big number 10? And then our little bit of number 9. Okay, but I'm actually going to read, um, not from here, just because it's a, a little bit different version. It's not too different, but it's enough. Um, and here's how your verse goes. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. This is from the New International Reader's Version. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. And I don't think it necessarily means if you're walking and you walk straight, it's going to be a super safe path. There's not going to be like any snakes or wolves in the road. That's not necessarily what it's saying. This is um, more of a metaphor, I guess, um, of how you live your life with integrity, how much integrity and honesty you show when um, the straight path is meaning the path of integrity you're honest and you uh, show people who you really are and the person that you really are is somebody that God wants you to be. The crooked path is when you're kind of avoiding God's ways and avoiding people finding out the truth about you because maybe God's, it's not God's way and you don't want to be seen as dishonest or, or maybe you're just hiding for another reason so you're zigging and zagging. But one, the straight path is a safe way to go. It's the good way to go, right? And the crooked path, mm, you're going to get caught. So, I'm going to go over it one more time. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely. But anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. That's Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Um, if you want to email me or message me or FaceTime me or something, you do your memory verse, you'll get a treat brought to your house. Pretty cool. Um, also, if you're watching this and you did our super cool tie-dye event, those will be out this week. We had a little bit of a snafu <laughs> with them, but everything is going to be great. It's going to be perfect, pretty sure, um, and they'll be out probably, I'm aiming for Wednesday or Thursday. Check out your emails soon. Okay, so we're going to do prayer time, and then we're going to go, and then we have another week of October. Just one more week of October, right? Yes, and then it is November. November is just around the corner. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much um, for your word. Thank you so much for um, illustrations of your word. Thank you so much for people who love to teach your word and help your word understandable for me and kiddos and... Um, you know, pretty much everybody who didn't speak doesn't speak Greek or Hebrew. Lord, I'm grateful for that. Um, Lord, I ask that you help 
myself and my friends and the people at our church to be people who are integritous, <laughs> who um, live a life uh, full of integrity, are people that, um, that people know that they can trust and that God can point to for people to trust. Um, we love you so much, God, and, and we ask that our lives are lives that reflect you and make you smile. We love you so much. Pray it all in your son's name. Amen. Okay, that's all I have this week. I hope you guys have a really, really good week. The weather is kind of cooling down a little bit. Play outside a little bit while you can. Jump on the leaves, carve a pumpkin, but be safe, okay? All right, love you. Bye. Webster or Oxford Dictionary man or woman. I am proposing a new adjective for the dictionary that describes a person acting with integrity. The word is integritous and I realize we have virtuous and honorable but I don't see why we can't add one more that describes it exactly. I think this would be a very integritous addition to the English language and I look forward to any royalties. Kindly, Jesse Christian. That's a good email.